what is up guys in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can add your own personal watermarks to your images in Python because isn't it annoying when you have an image that is just on the internet and a lot of people are trying to download it but they don't respect your privacy so this program will help you with being able to select an image and then it's going to put this overlay on your image with your own website name or whatever text you prefer to add to the image and it really works on any image I even created this dialog box that allows you to pick an image so that if you have an image, it's going to look at it and it's going to place your watermark right above that. So that's what we will be making in Python. And the first thing you want to do as always is start a new project. And once you have a new project, you want to right click on your folder and create a new Python file and just call it main or whatever you want to call it. Then we have to go to the terminal and as soon as it loads, we will type pip install pillow. And that's the package we'll be using for this tutorial. I'm using Python 3.8 for this. So for the best results, use the same version. So the first thing we should do is import from pill image, image draw and image font. Then we have to import from TK inter the file dialog to open the files. And from take inter, we need to import TK for the whole program to function. So the first thing we should create is the TK interface. So this will initialize it and we immediately want to close the window that it creates. So we'll just call withdraw as soon as we start the program. Next, we want to retrieve the file name from the user. So we'll type in file name and that's going to equal file dialog dot ask open file name. And inside here, we're going to add a few parameters such as the initial directory. And here you can pick whatever kind of starting destination you want. You just need to search on your computer. For me, I have this one over here that takes me directly to my downloads where I have most of my images and I'll be using that. Then also we can provide a title because that's always nice. Select an image and that's all we need to do there. Just to make sure this works, of course, we'll go ahead and print the file name and run this program immediately. Then as you can see, it's going to open this dialog. It has select an image at the top. We can go to our desktop and click on this one over here. And when we come back, it's going to give us the destination over here. If you're on MacBook, you will get this error, but it doesn't really mean anything. It's just it has two classes that are clashing and that's all it's trying to say on MacBook. So you can disregard that and continue with the program. We will close the terminal and comment out this print statement because now we can go ahead and create the function add watermark. And inside here we'll add an image that we want to add the watermark to and we want the watermark text to be whatever we decided to be. And the first thing we have to do is refer to our opened image by typing in image Dot open and this will create an image object. Then we want to get the image width and the image height for later reference. So we'll type that and type in open image dot size. Then we want to go ahead and draw the image. So we're gonna call it draw and type in image draw dot draw. And inside here, we need to draw on the opened image. We also want to specify the font size, which is going to equal an integer of the image width divided by eight. And later on, you're going to have to modify this depending on how much text you decide to insert. Because if you have very long words, it's not going to fit in the frame because this aspect ratio is good for around 10 letters. If you want more, you're going to have to increase it. Otherwise, if you have very short text, you can decrease it. I'll show you later though. But the whole purpose of this is that when the image gets bigger, we increase the font size with the image. Otherwise, if you specify, let's say 50 as a font size, it's going to appear far too small if you have a very high resolution image. So below that, we need to go ahead and create a font. And this is going to take image font dot true type. And inside here, I'm going to type in Arial dot TTF. And on Windows, I believe you need to keep this in lowercase, but you need to make sure that this refers to a font that is on your computer for it to work. For MacBook, I have to use the uppercase A, otherwise it will not work. But I believe on Windows, you can just use a lowercase A and that will work fine. And then inside here, we need to go ahead and call the font size and that will take care of the font. Then we want to retrieve the coordinates of where we want to place the text. So we're gonna go ahead and type in X, Y, and that's going to equal the integer of the image width 
divided by two. And the same thing is going to happen to the image height. So image height divided by two. So we should get the center of the image. And finally, we just want to add the watermark. So to do that, we're going to first type in draw dot text. And inside here, we need to first provide a tuple of our X and Y coordinates of where we want to place it, the text that we want to place inside. For the font, we're going to provide the font we have created. Then we want to give it a fill color, and that's going to be hash FFF for white. And you can also decide to give it a stroke if you want. I'm just doing it so I can show you that you can customize your text. So I'm gonna give it a stroke width of five and make sure to add a stroke fill. Otherwise it's going to be set to default, which is white. And you won't see that if you have white as a color. So here we're going to go ahead and type in hash 222. And finally, we want to make sure that the text is placed in the center. So we need to specify middle and S. We also need to show the new image, otherwise nothing is going to happen. So we're gonna type in Im opened image dot show. And finally at the bottom, we can call this function, add the file name of the image we want to edit and the text that we want to edit. So this time we can just type in code palace and we will run this program by right clicking on main and clicking on run. And then when we go here, we will have the file dialog so we can click on any image we want. I will go ahead and click on this one over here. And you'll notice I'll have code palace right there. And as you can see, there's a lot of empty space around. And if you want to fix that so that you have less empty space, all you have to do is decrease this number. So we can decrease it to six, for example, rerun the program. Let's go ahead and pick an image again. And this time Code Palace will be much bigger than the previous one. So you only have to really edit this parameter here once because in general, you'll only have one logo, of course. But once you find the sweet spot, you can just upload as many things as you want. So we can go back to eight and type in website.com. Pick on a different image, one like this one. And now we have website.com over the other watermark. So as you can see, it's a very simple way to add watermarks to images. And you can even do this in bulk if you add a for loop through a folder. So it can save you a lot of time in the long run. And as a homework project, I just recommend you try to find a way to loop through a folder and add a watermark to each one of the images. But with that being said, I hope this tutorial helped. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.